so we'll start with few articles from today's newspaper the most interesting article is so 27 years after that effort to bring the women's bill the both the houses of the parliament have passed the women's bill right so women's bill gets parliament seal now when the president gives an art it will become an act all of you know the basic details of indian polity right now the, the thing is the bill is not going to be implemented immediately it will take certain amount of time to be implemented we have discussed all those points now the thing is how will this change the life of ordinary women in the country right now we can we can we can no longer say you know we, we are not a country without women's reservation right now the debates will be more about should it be extended to jobs should it be extended to private sector other areas is it the only way to empower women so there are so many ways to discuss having said all these things there is also one more interesting article in today's hindu that is this article is the opposition's decision to boycott certain news anchors okay justified okay what do you understand by boycott first of all boycott is something that we hear in modern indian history in upsc right yesterday also i told you right so boycott starts when gandhi gandhi is very famous for boycott right swadeshi movement boycott like we hear about boycott boycott is not something new boycott is not something new to indians or to the world right but here specifically there is a concept called as name and shame the concept is what name and shame name and shame means you are you are identifying 14 people saying that these people are hate peddlers they are promoting what hate our agenda and you are publicly naming them and saying that these people should not be given chance to interact with the opposition block okay so that is where the entire debate comes into the picture okay now this can also be considered as cancel culture there is a concept called as cancel culture what is cancel culture it's more or less a western phenomena where a group of people will boycott something because of certain values this concept is called as cancel culture simply put i will tell you like this let's say slavery right any company or any individual who is considered as a good person like let's say i am a famous freedom fighter okay but in future you came to know that i encouraged slavery in 2022 23 people will say even though that person might be a great freedom fighter good person and all these things but he still supported what slavery so i cancel him cancel means i no longer consider him as a good person or a great person this this phenomena is called as cancel culture okay you can take it you, you can extend it to almost everything music artist movie uh, stars okay politicians any famous personalities you can be cancelled okay the the ag again uh, in india the famous example is sushant singh rajput's suicide and what happened after that okay after that there is a trend called as boycott bollywood okay boycott bollywood is more about cancel culture that means whenever a new movie of a famous hero's son or daughter is about to come okay they will say cancel nepotism cancel that movie boycott that movie boycott this thing so all this is called as cancel culture so cancel culture has its own merits but at the same time you are judging the past or something else based on your newfound wisdom you cannot judge someone who is born in 1900 or 1818 in india for following some social evil okay today you can call it as social evil back then it is a social norm right so we call it as woke culture w o k -E, woke woke culture that means you are woke suddenly you are now wise wisdom you you hate uh, slavery uh, you are pro lgbt i mean you support lgbt right uh, you uh, you don't support casteism and all these things you suddenly say it's woke culture okay woke culture actually leads to what cancel cancel culture the thing is it's a very slippery slope the moment i start cancelling someone it's very easy to hate or cancel someone you are a journalist you say something very critical of me okay with the flimsy evidence you say something very critical of me then i can say cancel him cancel culture my my followers will start canceling you they will start criticizing you on twitter facebook youtube uh, companies won't 
or give ads to your newspaper so cancel culture is a dangerous phenomena why if you are canceling someone for a genuine reason okay that's a different thing right we'll, we'll take an indian example mahatma gandhi right i hope most of you know mahatma gandhi supported britishers in world war 1 or two i don't remember the which world war right he supported the britishers in an expectations that britishers will give us some freedom or leeway right he technically support what he doesn't support world war but he he more or less supports the british side in an anticipation okay in 2023 when you read that article oh, oh okay gandhi supported you know something else i will cancel gandhi you get my point right in the same way in 2023, if you are cancelling someone, it's a daily dangerous and slippery slope. So, people need to have a very high tolerance levels of freedom of speech and expression. Okay. So, if you are cancelling journalists, you are setting a very wrong precedent. You are setting a very wrong precedent. Tomorrow, what will happen? Some other political party will boycott some other journalist who is against that political party. Yes or no? All of us know this, right? Every political party have a TV, media, press. Okay. This group will support that political party. This group will support that political party. That group will cancel this journalist. This group will cancel this journalist. Then who is there to support uh, the journalism? Right? Right. This is one side of the story. The other side of the story is, as a journalist, whom should you be speaking for? You should not forget your core principles. What is the purpose of media? Media is supposed to act as a bridge between the people and the state. Okay. So, the moment you take the side of the state or people, okay, you are kind of biased. Yes or no? See, everybody is biased. But the thing is, what are you biased about? If you are biased about constitution of India, welfare of the people, you are considered as a good journalist. If you are biased about money and protecting the media, sorry, protecting the media houses or uh, in companies and industries, then there is a different kind of bias. Yes or no? Even movie critics will have bias. Who is free from bias? Almost no single person is free from bias. But the thing is, how biased are you and why? If you are biased for the right reasons, for the truth, then you are a good journalist. Yes or no? There are, there are vernacular journalists in this country who gave up their life fighting sand mafia. Yes or no? Right? If you go to rural India, Hindi belt or any, any South Indian, any, any place, rural journalists have sacrificed their life in the search of truth. Such kind of journalism is more appreciated. Okay. But if you are biased towards TRP ratings, shouting, who shouts the louder? Right. Or if you are biased towards one particular political party, this creates what? Echo chambers. This creates what? Echo chambers. What is echo chamber? Resound. Right. Echo chamber means you hate X, I hate X. We both are shouting wrong things about x so we are happy you will only watch my kind of news i will only uh, give news to your kind of audience so audience are biased so are the media houses only when i hate for example mr chandra Naidu, you are going to watch a video then what will i do i will start making videos hating mr chandra Naidu. then automatically i will get views okay i also know that that is total bakwas there is no sub content but anybody can have youtube anybody anybody can have a mic okay the thing is people are not working for the people people are working for money yes or no this is a problem right now in the country right uh, is there any problem online am i audible clear no issues right yeah okay are you understanding the terms echo chamber Cancel culture, right? Media houses. Okay, next. Now, what is the fourth pillar of democracy? There are three pillars that is, legislature, executive, judiciary. The fourth pillar is media. Okay, that is the importance that is given to media in democracy. Media can make or break a country. Media can make or break a democracy why 
the media which is which also considers includes social media print media tv journalism and all these things they start promoting one person that person will automatically be promoted he can even become prime minister or chief minister of a state so media can choose to hide your weaknesses only support your strengths okay that is one way of looking at the things so when you have such a powerful role okay you should have good regulation you should have good regulation that regulation should not come from outside that regulation should only come from inside so that is why most of the world says the best way to regulate media is self regulation the best way to regulate media is what self regulation as p sainath says there is no restriction on media from the state okay media restricted itself for what for trp and money think about it when you open tv there are 900 channels or 1000 channels yes or no every tv company will give 1000 channel uh, will come to you you and all these things right who watches 1000 channels nobody watches 1000 channels you will hardly watch 10 or 15 channels maximum right but if there if there are 1000 channels everybody is fighting for the top the pyramid is so thick at the bottom that there is very few market or money at the top because nobody because there is less quality journalism okay everybody is chasing money and trp okay that is the biggest problem next who owns media channels i i already told you politicians and business people own uh, media channels if you if you look at andhra pradesh as an example okay one particular community owns more media channels than any other community okay this is an empirical data not my accusation or anything okay one particular uh, caste based community owns more media channels than any other community okay what happens is most of those media channels support the leader of that particular community okay at the national level if you look at it okay mr ambani directly or indirectly owns majority of indian media right and uh, the other person is mr adani adani also have good stakes in media so when media is concentrated in the hands of few people and few communities okay automatically the media will be biased towards few people okay it's not a criticism just think about it it's a fact okay when media is concentrated in few people's hand automatically i will try to promote my interest rather than people's interest okay that is when india is moving towards independent journalism what independent journalism okay or public funded journalism okay see at the end of the day it's all about money right if i have to write a truth what should i do i should travel in that area i should go and talk to the people living in that particular area yes or no every media outlet will shout in kashmir this is happening in kashmir that is happening how many times did you actually see indian media going into the kashmir talking to the locals making documentaries is yes or no shouting from the comfort of ac and arm chain journalism is very easy grassroots level journalism is very difficult okay for that you need what money okay if i am getting that money anyhow by shouting the loudest why should i bother to go to kashmir yes next we have discussed about whom media we have discussed about people who are boycotting the media freedom of speech and expression we have discussed about self regulation so government should not regulate media and lastly the biggest villains in the entire story are the audience if somebody is promoting hate why are you watching hate people will make content only when there are audience is yes or no if nobody is watching hate filled videos why will that channel promote hate so there is good audience for hate bias there is a concept called as confirmation bias i hate a particular co- community yes or no i hate a particular community when i hate a particular community what kind of news do i want to watch videos promoting projecting bringing out hate related to that particular community that's that's as simple as that is yes or no we are 1.4 billion population with around 70 to 80% of the population with smartphones and internet connection what do bored pe- bored people do doomsday scrolling the concept is called as doomsday scrolling from morning to evening without any purpose rhyme rhythm and meaning in life you will do what scroll the 
charts videos and media automatically see it's not a joke right open any news outlet in the country there are lakhs 30 lakh subscribers 40 lakh subscribers 1 crore subscribers where do all these people come from free internet and cheap china phones if you remove these two things then indian media is all about print media yes or no okay i hope you understand right so now uh, Am I going fast? Are you able to understand so far? Any questions still now? Are you able to understand whatever I am trying to tell you? There are multiple stakeholders in this entire drama. The, the audience, the TV company, the owners, the government, regulation, journalists themselves. Yes or no? See, one of the famous quotes I really like from Indian media comes from uh, Ravish Kumar. Okay. Ravish Kumar is a very famous journalist. Now he's in YouTube. All of you know Ravish Kumar, I guess. If you don't know, you can find out about him. Right? He says, not all battles are fought to win or lose. Okay? Sometimes you have to fight battles just to tell that somebody was in the ground fighting the opposition. Yes or no? If there are so many people promoting hate, at least one person should stand up and fight what? The hate. When you fight the hate, what happens? You may lose. Okay, but morals are at least the next generation will look up to you and say, yes, at least one person is trying and fighting for truth. Yes or no? You cannot fight big corporates, but you should speak what? Truth. I hope you understand. So, the Indian media problem is self-created and money related more or less. Okay, if you are so bothered about promoting truth in the society, what should you do? You should subscribe to independent fearless media okay that is crowd funded public funded media houses right one of the examples is news laundry i'm not saying that news laundry is one such example news laundry is one of those websites which is funded by the public okay the wire all these again have their own biases i'm not supporting them i'm just telling you they have their own biases but these are called as independent media the print started by shekhar gupta the former editor of uh, Indian Express. Okay, all these are examples of independent journalism. Now there is one more trend that is newsletters, Substack. Okay, there also you can hear independent voices. Right. So like this, there is a good amount of discussion hidden under this. At the end of the day, the summary is you can boycott somebody directly or indirectly. Naming and shaming may or may not change them because they are not bothered about name and shame. They have given they have given up all the morals values ethics only then they get into the shouting business and start promoting hate hate is a business it's not a ideology it's pure business hate spread faster than truth all of us know this yes or no there are wonderful videos in youtube also you can watch them why hate gets more money Any regulatory body possible to scrutinize the media output before reaching the, that is what I am saying, right? The moment you start bringing in one more layer of red tapeism. See, her question is both genuine and at the same time problematic, right? Genuine. Somebody has to control the media. I am XYZ political party. Today I came to power. What will I do? I will send the police or use this regulatory body to suffocate the voice of ABC media. So that means the media which support ABC party, I am suffocating them. Okay. Sometimes they might have genuine criticism towards my policies. Okay. By having a regulatory body, what will I do? I will create an extra layer of burden. Already media is having its own issues. I am actually creating one more red tapeism. Okay. Then what will happen? Five years down the line, elections will change. Who will come into power? ABC will come into the power. XYZ will become opposition then what will abc do abc will use the same body to suffocate the voice of xyz related media houses at the end of the day who is the loser media is the loser okay so that is why regulatory bodies are not such a great idea in general okay now so i'm not giving you any stance nothing again no no body is free from bias no individual is free from bias okay so it cannot happen the, you see you have to have a tolerance level if somebody is writing an article criticizing example mr chandra of naidu you also have a pen and paper who is stopping you from writing 
an article against supporting chandrababu naidu it's all in your hands right fight media with media fight article with article do not fight article with ban okay unless it's pure hate then judiciary will come for example that sudarshan tv is peeving venom against upsc aspirants upsc jihad and all this bakwas right so such kind of garbage automatically will mix in garbage in the long run nobody will even remember okay but if you do wonderful journalism even 50 years down the line people will remember are this person is a great journalist who oh, see there is a very wonderful case in usa called as watergate scandal who brought out the watergate scandal for example bofors panama papers bofors case all these are wonderful examples of journalism even after 50 years we will talk about watergate scandal why a journalist had the courage to bring out the scam happening in the us government Yes or no? We are not even going to whistleblowers. We are just talking about truth. Okay? And our our national motto is what? More or less? Satya Meva Jayate. Yes or no? Our national emblem has a motto, right? Satya Meva Jayate. Truth alone will triumph. Okay? So we should keep the truth alive. For that, who is more responsible? An educated, conscious, right? Self-critical. public is much more needed than echo chambers okay right i hope that's enough discussion on this particular topic and one more point you can always do is print media is long term consumption whereas tv media is just for the short span okay see again we'll go into behavioral economics what is behavioral economics me using your behavior as a commodity okay in a world filled with youtube shorts instagram facebook twitter and all these things your attention span is hardly 5 seconds if i write a very lengthy article which will take 15 minutes for you to read and if i make a 30 second short which one is more preferred 30 second short is preferred why you do not have any vested interest you don't care about chandrababu naidu or rajshekar reddy or mr rajagan mohan reddy all you wanted to know is i have some information on something so that you can gossip about it okay 30 seconds is a better input okay and your opinion is formed in 30 seconds that's all you don't know whether that opinion is biased correct right or wrong so it's very easy to do the easy things rather than the right things if you are really bothered about truth what will you do you will read a very lengthy research empirical data filled references based article citing okay this is the truth who has such kind of time If not for UPSC, how many of you will be bothered to read newspapers? <laughs> There lies the problem. Got my point? Yes. Hmm. So, what is the conclusion? Can you can somebody give me a clarity on what you understood finally? Self-regulation is more important rather than anything else. But how will you survive without money? What will happen to all the regulations if there is no money? You will close the shop and go home. okay apart from that you can always ask public for money to support honest independent journalism if you are actually a good journalist with good values and people like your stuff then people will support you as far as i remember the print uh, have a, a hindi hindi article i mean hindi centric journalist called pooja yadav i guess i i forgot her name most probably pooja yadav she is very famous in our in north india for her good journalism right so there are hardly right vinit narayan mm -hmm. again everybody have their own opinion right yes so try to think of five journalist whom you really like gauri lankesh ah <laughs> we'll start with the sixer okay <laughs> okay palki sharma okay you people have any clue no five journalists name two from telugu states prakash raja <laughs> that, that is a problem we forgot the difference between actor and a journalist <laughs> yes okay shekhar gupta okay 
yes all of you understood what i'm trying to tell you right okay fine so don't look at articles only from what is being discussed this article discusses more or less about who likes whom what and all those things but we have to discuss it from multiple stakeholder point of view when you discuss an article or a topic from multiple stakeholder point of view you'll get what a holistic perspective so who is to be blamed everybody is politicians is politician wrong to use media media is happy to be used okay as i jokingly say the best compliment indian media got in the recent times is from donald trump why when indian media went to usa for howdy modi the entire donald trump promotion campaign by prime minister modi okay trump gave a compliment to indian media uh, uh, prime minister modi you have a wonderful media when somebody says you have a wonderful media then that media is totally crawling yes as the emergency code goes uh, advani the lk advani famously says you know uh, when when indira gandhi asked the bureaucrats to bend they crawled okay in the same way when indian media nobody is asking them even to bend they are sticking to the floor okay for what money and things again i am not being harsh or judgmental on indian media probably if i am a journalist who is not making money and if i get an opportunity to shout and get money maybe i will also do the same thing okay the problem is what somebody should give me money for what honest journalism yes or no so that is why you should public you should buy the hindu or indian express you should not download it from telegram channels statutory disclaimer right encourage honest journalism if you like it okay hmm. right so if you ever write a mains answer or a essay try not to write like this okay this is an example of how not to write an essay in my humble opinion again without judging the content i'm judging the writing style i i i it's creative okay but i didn't get what he's trying to tell uh he could have said it in a very very simple terms right what he tries to do is he brings how indian space system or ecosystem has been created by public funding very simple terms when government pumps money that system will flourish okay once the system flourishes you can then give it to the private sector you understand right today there is no ecosystem in india there was no space system who has to start pumping money government of india has to pump money what will create what ecosystem once that ecosystem has been created then you can allow whom private players this is a simple way to tell the story okay once you do that it will have positive spillover effects it will have what positive spillover effects that means we'll start with his own question which i also have asked you in the classrooms right india is doing wonderfully well in space but is it required for such a country which has lot of poverty and destitution yes or no hmm? how can both of them coexist on one side you are saying the india is the first country to land rover on south pole on the other hand you are saying there is poverty and destitution right what is the reason he says science we are doing so well because in the initial days we have invested in institutions vikram sarabhai isro everything has been nicely established they took the institutions very seriously and whatever we are seeing in 2023 is because of what we have done in 1950s 1960s 70s that that investment in 1960 70 led to achievements in 2023 it's evident and nobody can refute that logic okay the same thing has not been done more or less in health education and other social institutions so what should we do invest in the institutions through whom through the government that is one way to understand okay he is saying invest again money in which areas semiconductors biotechnology or what we call as emerging technologies okay invest money in emerging technologies make the country great Incre improve the money increase the money no problem okay but all those things should also lead to investment of redoubling the 
economic growth in a much more inclusive fashion. Yes, I hope you understand. See, it's one thing to say India is the third largest economy in the world and at the same time saying that so many government schools do not have bathrooms, Anganwadis do not have water connections is one thing. Yes or no? What should we do? The development should be inclusive. I hope you understand the difference, right? His, his core summary is that more or less in multiple ways. Grow big, but bring that money to other areas also. What we call as human developmental index parameters. Education, health, standard of living, quality of living, water, electricity and all these things. So if you can manage both, nobody can criticize. So use the achievements elsewhere to solve the problems here. Okay, that is the major takeaway. Prelims point of view, mains point of view, there is nothing in that article. This article is much more useful for prelims point of view. Okay. A light bulb movement, movement for the Indian fan market. Literally fan here is fan. Fan market. Okay. Yes. How do I explain this article in simple terms? Few years ago, we were all happy to use the fluorescent bulbs. All of you remember the fluorescent bulbs, right? Okay. Government of India has taken an initiative to convince the people that the bulbs you are using, the LCD bulbs more or less, okay, are not so eco-friendly. They consume lot of electricity. So it has announced a scheme called as Ujala. Ujala in Hindi means light. Okay. So they have given free LED bulbs to people to replace what LCD bulbs okay and they also replaced more or less a good number of street lights in the country so almost all the street lights have been replaced with LED bulbs so LED bulbs la last long and they also save energy okay by doing this the biggest impact is carbon footprint the amount of electricity needed to run LED bulbs is much lower in comparison to the LCD bulbs and you don't also create lot of e-waste. So all these are good things about the LED bulbs. Okay. So now such kind of movement should also happen for fans. Why? Mm. Where is that data? The green and the red color. The green color says what? The green color argues that India has a goal of reducing harmful emissions by 45% by 2030. So in the next seven years, six years roughly, we have to reduce good amount of carbon footprint. That will only happen when we start saving electricity. How will you save electricity? By moving away from fans. Sir, fans is just one fan, no? As a Vikram cinema, what is that movie? Aparachitudu. There is a movie called as Aparachitudu, right? If one person uses one fan, it's not a problem. But if 1.4 billion population are using fans at more or less same times, what will happen? So much amount of electricity is being consumed. That is what the red line says, right? One third of all the electricity consumption in India is by fans. Okay. And almost 90% of all Indian households have fans 90 percent of 1.4 billion population household again is not household is a group of four right so if you take that many families using fans probably now everybody have a 2 bhk 1 bhk everybody different different room different different fans we are consuming a lot of energy that has to be reduced by using more efficient fans okay who has to decide who are uh, when are they efficient both government and market should come and regulate the fans. Yes or no? Regulate in a positive sense, not in a negative sense. Why regulate or why should we have these discussions or how is it useful for UPSC? Think about it. Just like LED, okay, if we are replacing good number of fans with high 
you know five star rating fans or something like that which yes. will have less uh, fuel efficient fans and all those things we are reducing carbon footprint we are reducing the electricity demand and we are also helping to create a cleaner planet okay we are trying to create a cooler planet okay that is a summary of this article you can go into the technical details but in the long run you should remember what everybody should come together and invest more into the innovations innovations have more or less dried up yes or no when is the last time we have discussed about some innovation in a fan they kept a bulb in the fan fan plus light then they added a remote control to the fan fan will stop now you have an app for a fan all these are what innovations are the actual innovations are just value addition value addition but real innovation is what a fan running in a much efficient fashion at a much lower electricity cost that kind of innovation has to happen and second thing sir that kind of fan is there in china japan okay what will happen imports will increase or decrease it imports will increase so we should create such a wonderful fan in india and it should create local employment and it should also help the planet then we can also export it if we can create such kind of ecosystem that is wonderful news for india so this article has a much larger impact in comparison to the earlier articles think about it yes hmm? see again government cannot give five star fans for free right it cost very much i think the good fans nowadays are around 4500 or 6000 rupees bldc fans and all these things so slowly slowly if more and more people started using five star fans what will happen more innovation will come more companies will come then the price will come down it will take time but one day we will reach that moment then we will save electricity clear hmm. so this is the summary that you can remember for upsc what is the summary whatever we are doing it is very important for india's clean energy transition as much as you are investing in electric vehicles okay you should also invest in fuel efficient fans okay that is a very small point but if you think about it we don't even bother about it every day we look at the fan but we don't even think about it or we don't even understand the impact about it but majority of your electricity bill in your household actually comes from fans in the winter if you are not using heater that is why your electricity bill is very less is yes or no but in winter we substantiate or substitute it with geysers and heaters so the bill is same okay hmm. got it yes hmm. right so then the last article today is about silent killer that is hypertension in india so there is a good amount of empirical data to show that many young indians are having ncds what are ncds non communicable diseases is hypertension a ncd technically yes why you develop it either probably because of your genetics or preferably lifestyle so more or less stress not having proper food not having any enough physical activity right then what else improper work timings too much comfort lifestyle all these are what lifestyle issues because of lifestyle issues what is happening increasing hypertension is increasing is it a good thing or a bad thing good thing for a planet bad thing for human beings is or no hmm. right add to this alcoholism tobacco consumption drugs right and uh, the best silent killer that is packaged food is or no all of us are used to fast food yes what kind of drinks do you prefer water or 
see i mean it's it's very ironic right uh, when you go to a restaurant one of my friend will say i will not have thumbs up okay i will have lime soda how are they different yes or no that is also carbureted drink this is also carbureted drink okay this might have little bit more pesticides but the thing the problem there is it's not water right it's not normal thing okay any any soda anything is also not good for your health in the long run you will also have lot of salt okay and the biggest problem as the article also talks about is sugar consumption and salt consumption people consume lot more salt than that is needed why do we consume so much amount of salt yes there is a beautiful book called as the sapiens yes or no sapiens by yuval noah harari he talks about our own primitive nature our primitive nature is human beings are very nicely addicted to salt and sugar okay salt is not something that you find very commonly in the nature in nature salt is not a regular commodity whenever you find salt your basic instincts will kick in so that is why most of the masalas so called masala either you take mag maggi masala or kfc masala or any masala they are always a mix of sugar and salt yes or no when you mix sugar and salt it is a very very addictive combination okay so that is why chips you take anything in the market most of the packaged food that is fast food consumption and all those things they encourage you to consume more salt or sugar okay so like this we are consuming more salt and sugar either through packaged food and all these things so we should change our what lifestyle okay i want to bring a small thought process here okay recently there is a discussion about sanatan dharam okay sanatan dharam normally speaking if you if you separate it from the hinduism which is a later addition to the sanatan dharam the discourser okay it's a lifestyle what do people expect you to do people expect you to do surya namaskar that is when you wake up you do physical activity you talk to the sun spend time in the public and all those things then you have wonderful invention by mr patanjali that is yoga sutras yes or no and there has always been a general discussion of sattvic food at least try to consume very limited limited quantities that to nature based okay move back to millets and all these things so that is what pm says lifestyle for environment it is not something new ancient india had always had this irrespective of religion okay people expect you to do what consume natural food every day is or no we make fun out of mantan sachinarayan raju which who is a very famous character a person in telugu states right he encourages nature based food but i i personally know people who before all this became youtube celebrations and all these things who consumed a fruit juice every single day in the morning okay whether beetroot uh, buttergourd or something like that every day single day natural natural juice okay ayurvedic based what happened that person even at the age of 68 doesn't have bp or diabetes okay so a way of life has always been designed and given to us it's us who happily has forgotten all these things unfortunately like our own cult yadara jata da praja we are also reactive people when somebody gets a heart stroke or a back pain or when something happens to someone in the family that is when we start changing our lifestyle till yesterday he was a heavy fan of kfc hospital visit next day onwards he is a full fan of organic food it doesn't work like that mitam amritam amitam visham you have to do everything in moderation yes or no you can have fast food but you should prefer normal food or home cooked food or something which not vegetarian again i don't want to go into that debate okay anything moderate is healthy you have to do the same physical exercise it's more about lifestyle okay so you can also throw in the discussion of smart technology here yes or no for example nowadays tech has increased a ring smart watch a bracelet or something like that if you wear it will keep telling you you have to take this many steps a day okay your cholesterol is increasing your body weight is increasing your bmi is increasing technology will constantly keep reminding you that you are not having a healthy lifestyle okay you have to change your lifestyle if you are not getting nudge you have to get a nudge from the technology 
right so you can use the west and the east is or no to have a wonderful life okay so that is also one solution prevention is better than cure okay but all this is only for today's article from tomorrow again we will go back to kfc have coca cola and all these things because the article came we have to discuss it's our moral responsibility yes or no yes oh. right and prime minister modi has also promoted something like plogging whenever you are walking you can also pick up waste swachh bharat so picking up waste while walking is plogging so plogging also keeps you healthy and the city also healthy so like this we can also change our lifestyle pm life lifestyle for environment which is also good for you which is good for the planet clear so don't look at only the issue also look at the solutions part because as a district collector it's your responsibility to promote what healthy lifestyle but the district collector himself is having a very big tummy with you know buttons tight buttons and all these things when you go and say swachh bharat man ki baat and all those things people won't listen yes or no yes i mean it's it's a matter of fact i understand you are a very busy district collector you don't have time for all these things but there are people who make time for all these things got it yeah i hope online people are following any questions so far so what is the summary for health article if you love someone your parents yourself your siblings change your lifestyle talk to your parents reduce the consumption of oil and all these things move to a healthy lifestyle be the change you wish to see in the world right it it can happen so collectively it's a cultural thing think about it if you are living in a colony uh, you know everybody right and everybody is going for walking in the morning okay you are the only person who doesn't go then every other person have a bonding you don't have that bonding just to be in that group at least you will have that culture but if there is no culture of walking in your entire colony everybody wakes up at 10 11 12 then there is no healthy ecosystem so while we look at the policy perspective we should also think about what happened to uh, the society as a whole day before yesterday what happened thanks to this ganesh chaturthi mandaps and all these things power cut was there okay so they did something with the coal and power was gone so i was thinking as a child power cut was a very good mechanism for socialization every day we used to have morning two hours power cut evening two hours power cut in that time we are forced to go out talk to people is or no make new friends in the colony i i met some of the good people in my life only because of power cuts or else i would be happily sleeping in my home is or no so it's a socialization thing you talk to your neighbors now nowadays what happens when there is no power cut you literally don't go out of your home there is no socialization nothing changed it's our lifestyle it's our choices that have changed inverters are a very common thing now power cut it doesn't affect me why fan is running tv is running internet is going on i don't have to move out of my house i'm not saying that you should remove your uh, inverters okay there is a chance of lifestyle okay but the choices has to be deliberately made but that thing is more important than the health as robin sharma says health is a jewel that only the sick people can see yes or no health is a jewel that only sick people can see when when we are healthy we don't understand the appreciate the value of health only when it's too late we understand it so if you are writing an answer right from government perspective right from company's perspective right from businesses perspective because hindu article says food safety standards authority of india should pressurize people to say how much salt and sugar is being used in the chips packet yes or no a kid is crying for chips will he read food safety standards authority of india packet then open the chips okay as an adult also i won't do the thing okay some very literate educated people might do that i don't do that usually so what we should do is we should promote healthy lifestyle millet based chips Yes or no? Government should invent, incentivize what? Millet-based, natural-based products. Okay, less tax to them, more tax to who? Unhealthy, Unhealthy foods are these the so-called sugar and salty foods. Kerala is one of those first states to punish this fat-based foods. Okay, I forgot the term sin goods or something like that. 
no car to alcohol tobacco in the same way they have taxed that also what carbureted drinks uh, chips and all these things okay that means uh, there is a book called as nudge uh, it also talks about the same thing when you enter a school okay if you put chips and all these things in the beginning of the uh, canteen they will eat that but if you replace it with fruits children will only consume fruits so government from from government side there should be a nudge to encourage what healthy foods okay then you should also talk about individuals you should talk about technology right so like this if you discuss it from multiple point of view it will make a much better discussion clear so don't blame any one person blame everyone so that you will be safe you will be correct right if you blame entire society somebody will be correct got my point yes any questions right see you all on monday then right thank you